Yo, what's happening, guys? It is Tuesday, the 25th. April is getting down to the very, very last little bit. And of course, everybody's freaking out about this May 1st situation with the loan level price adjustment being announced by the Federal Housing Finance Ed Agency, who oversees Fannie and Freddie, who are now bumping up the cost of things for the people who are paying the bills, right? So let's get back to what I was talking about last week, right? We've got now the social experiment doing done again, where we take people who have not paid their bills. I mean, I'm not saying they haven't. Right, but listen. Let's just let's just get down to it. We're, those who who are a little bit maybe a rougher situation that may need a little bit more time to get themselves into position to buy into a house. Now they're making it more easy to get in, like they did in the two thousand early two thousands, late nineteen nineties, and then we saw that happen with that social experiment. Right now we're getting back there again. Let me show you this chart here that kind of illustrates the difference between each one of these things, so you kind of get a good feel for what's going on here. Now. This shows you where they have lowered some things. So now, now I'm not saying that there, there's still a cost with everything. It's still much better to put more money down. It's still better to have a better credit score. They have just bumped the cost up from where they were. So you can see in this area, the 80% to 85, just a little over 80, basically 80.01 to 85%. You're putting 15% down or less than 20 up to 15, that's where it's going to be its most expensive. So just avoid that area, right? If you're putting 25% down, it's really hardly even moved. So it's moved a little bit, but hasn't moved a lot. You start looking at these but these uh, these areas here, 760 to 779, for some reason, that they've chosen that to be a non-movement area. But here's where it's really kind of concerning. They've made it extremely better than where it used to be for these really low credit scores. Now, Granted, these low credit scores were really, really expensive. We're talking three and four base, three and four hundred basis points difference, or three percent different. Now it's like one point seven five. They knocked a lot off of it, but still pretty expensive, comparatively speaking, to the others. So, the reason I I bring this up so you guys know, listen, this does suck. This is complete crap. This should not be happening. You no, know, this whole bumping things up to try and subsidize in some form really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But when you start getting into understanding what they're doing in the background, now you understand why they're doing it. Now, when the, the Fannie and Freddie went to conservatorship in two, after 2008, government was supposed to get them back, you know, help them get back solvent and turn them loose again. Well, they've been solvent. They've been very solvent. We've talked about that. Well, there was a proposal that the guarantee fees should only go into affordable housing programs. Where did that go? That proposal never, that died. That went, went nowhere. All these guarantee fees that they're being collected, that's being handed to the federal government because now they they have Fannie, basically control of Fannie and Freddie, they're going towards fixing the build and paying back the build back rental plan. And, and, and there's nothing being built back, right? We all know that. So it's to this political plan that has been continued to show that it's a complete freaking wreck. Everything's a wreck. And if anybody even remotely believes that we're in a position where things have been better, I have no idea what freaking crap you're looking at. But apparently you haven't walked out of your damn house and looked around at all. You haven't been to the store. You haven't put gas in your tank. You haven't done a damn thing. Right. So people haven't done anything. You don't really get to say. So we're looking at everything that's going on. They're, they're taking from us. So think about this. Take from the people that can afford to do things, that have the credit score to be able to handle it. Because they can expand their credit, basically, I'm guessing is what they're thinking. I don't understand it. But then take from those who can afford it and then just hand it all up so you can pay for all this crap and throw money at Ukraine and all these things. So absolute insanity. So here's another thing that we're going to put. We're going to put this in as you scroll down. There is a um, there's a petition that you can sign that is put together by change. Oh, it's actually on the change.org site. And this petition was put together by Brian Stevens. I follow him, listen to what he has to say. He's got a lot of great information out there. Um, but this is something you, you'll have to go write it over here. Now that I've already clicked on it, it does not give you me the ability to show that you can sign it, but where this take the next step is, that's where you'd be able to sign the petition. Then forward it to everybody you know. Now, who the hell should you forward this to? This is this is something I think we should be we should be forwarding to. Get it to every realtor you know. Okay, so look at this. Why were we sent to every realtor you know? Look at this right here. This particular site shows you who's done, has spent the most money in lobbying. Look who spent the most money. The National Association of Realtors. They spend more than pharmaceutical companies on lobbying. So their asses are out there shaking it to try and get things done in, in Congress or in Senate or anywhere within the government to 
lean towards whatever the realtors need. Well, the realtors need this to stop too, just as much as all the rest of us. In fact, you want to see how much um, you see here. Well, that shows you who's spending. Now, that, that answers another question. I've had a lot of people say, when the getting appraisal is done, you have all these houses that were sold, just sold amongst people within the market. Somebody comes in, they buy it off the market. There's county records that show how it was purchased. But appraisers say they have to go off of what it shows on the, M NML, on the MLS, the multiple listing service, you know, pretty much run by real estate, the real estate agencies or the real estate, um, basically realtors and their agent, their association. That's it, the real estate association. So they ask, why is it that the that the appraisers have to do that? Why do appraisers have to go off of that? Well, there's a claim that that's how you know it's gone off the open market. Well, come on. Anybody who's buying from anybody, that's open market. But they're going to use that claim. Why? Now we know. They're the biggest freaking lobbyists. So if they're the lobbyists who are pushing that, they're keeping the NMLS pretty much viable by making sure you can't get rid of it because you're going to get an appraisal. You have to use it. So another thing to kind of know, very, very interesting stuff. So let's take a look at the charts here and see where we are with the market itself, because you know, want to be sure what we what we're what we're doing here to understand how the market's moving. And I am trying to get there. It is just there's too many things up. There's too much data to show, and there's too much things to talk about. I can't really get to all of it, but I want to get those couple get those couple things going because I want you to be aware of what's out there. All right, so here we go. Looking at this particular chart. Here's where we're showing, of course, this line that I've drawn, which I believe is a line that traders are looking at as a position, you know, of over purchasing or, or it, basically it's an overbought security and they're going to sell out of it at this point. And we've proven that to be accurate a couple of times here. The other thing that I'm really looking heavily at is this one right here. Now, I know it's kind of hard to see my cursor, but you've got this um, 200 day moving average. It tracks everything and shows what's happening over every 200 days or basically not every 200 days, but the average of the trades for the 200 days. Now, that has acted like a very, very strong ceiling. We Every time we broke above it, we've fallen below it, right? We're above it right now. So again, like I've been saying, lock that stuff. That thing is very formidable. It's very, very strong. We do have other support below this right here, converging with it. That could be helpful. We may trade sideways in here. I don't know how long. I'm not convinced that the that we're going to stay above the 200-day moving average, meaning if we're above the 2800-day moving average, we're in our best point on the rates because the rates are go you near know, cost of rates or rates go lower as this goes higher, as that goes higher, right? So we're at this point where, again, we're above the 200-day. It's going to get yanked back down every time. Look at this. Every time we've gone in, we've gone below it. So I think we're just tracking the 200-day moving average downward. We're going to keep following it downward. Interest rates are going to continue to climb slowly. This is what I believe. I could be wrong, but I also have Charlie Munger. And I also have Warren Buffett on my side here. So you guys might want to pay. To, if you got a deal in process right now and you're appointing lock, lock that thing. Secure it. Don't let this thing get away from you. Um, also, you're locking before the May 1st thing. So let's get this thing locked up before this whole thing takes, takes effect. Get that petition signed, send it to everybody you know, especially every realtor. Make sure they send it to every realtor they know, everybody in their brokerage. Raise hell. Let's see if we can get this thing stopped. Appreciate you guys. We will see you on the next round.